Hi all, let's have a look at another fascinating game of Leela. This is in TSAC Season 13, Division 3, Round 23 against Bobcat. C4, the opening moves. Knight f6, knight c3, e6 are given to both. So a very interesting uh, position which is debated by top Super Grandmasters uh, quite a bit actually, this line. e4 was played here, d5, e5, d4. Now white took on f6, d takes c3, and here the most usual move is actually b takes c3 it seems. Letting black have the onus of taking on f6. If black takes on f6 with the queen, then this is thought to be okay because that queen is subject to tempo gains potentially. For example like this, knight f3, d4, bishop g5. This position is thought to be quite nice for white with a small edge. For example, we follow through. Uh, this is uh, okay as well though. It's not too bad for black either, this line in particular, if we followed that through. But basically, uh, in this position, yeah, uh, B takes C3 is, is interesting. Also, D takes offering the exchange of queens. This is just uh, equal or maybe a, a tiny advantage for white. But in the game, we see Bobcat actually play F takes G7. This is rarer. Um, this is much rarer scene. Uh, so C takes D2 check. I used to play this a bit uh, for white. There was a there's a British player, a very strong one called Rogers, Jonathan Rogers, who was recommending at some point this line just for structural advantage, but it does get the queens off. And I think it's about even, you know, structurally black might be a little bit compromised, but it's it's about even really. Uh, so more common here is bishop takes d2, which was what was played. Bishop takes g7, but black has already got a decent position. Queen c2, maybe Bobcat's factoring in the h7 pawn, black having difficulty casting. But yeah, if we look at this, it's already kind of uncomfortable, this bishop. If we look at bishop c3, it's just asking for structural damage with minimal compensation. Black would be better there. So uh, queen c2 targeting h7, it seems, before doing anything else. Uh, knight c6, knight f3, queen e7. So black, leader, is wisely not castling kingside. After bishop d3 plays the very cheeky bishop d7, letting h7 go. So maybe this hadn't been anticipated by Bobcat, it's possible. Uh, queen b3 was played, which seems to be uh, you know, moving a piece twice in the opening, really. On taking on h7, then black just castles. And this is a real disaster for white, this position. Black's dynamic potential is really huge. For example, bishop d3, knight b4, this position, bishop c6 hitting d3, threatening structural damage, is just really bad after f5. There's knight d3 check. The queen can come in threatening mate there and then just picking up c4. This is horrible for white. So these the horrible things happen here in this position. And let's have a look at, again if white just castles here. Then it's fun after knight d4, huge fun for black to play. Uh, knight takes, bishop takes. And now there's a prospect of playing at the knee f5 hitting the bishop. And this is a total disaster line for white. f2 and h2 uh, attacked. And white can end up getting uh, checkmated pretty soon. Uh, so like here, then check and mating soon. Uh, so that sort of disaster is possible if white took this kind of poisoned pawn on h7 here. So instead queen b3, but of course, Black wants to castle queenside anyway, and it protects b7. So really good going for leader with black here. White castles, and f5, which ordinarily you'd be concerned about e5. But it seems black has enough control over e5. There isn't a lockdown that white's able to do, it seems. Bishop g5 is played. On rook f e1, e5, this position, black could even consider sacking the exchange here. This position, it seems, technically, is very, very promising because there's certain factors here, the bishop, the knight on d4, which actually makes this a very, very promising exchange sack, hitting the knight, putting pressure on white. Um, you know, for example, here, uh, that loses the knight, so if the knight goes back. This position is actually really good compensation for black uh, as, a, as a fictional scenario. You know, queen g6 hitting g2 and e4. 
and then this is like collapsing for white. So white's got to be really careful about the dynamic compensation in these lines. Uh, so let's see. Let's go back to the game continuation. So not rook f e one, but uh, bishop g five. We have bishop f six here. So not like an exchange just yet. Uh, rook f e one, bishop e eight. Nice move because it introduces bishop h5, which might help indirectly control d4, make make knight d4 more effective. Bishop e2 in advance of bishop h5, it seems. If rook a d1, as an example, bishop h5, pinning the knight, bishop e2 unpinning now, this position with e5 is actually very pleasant for black. This position, for example, knight d4 is nasty for white here, where white can end up losing material, as an example. Uh, so if we go back here, um, on yeah, this this instead of you know, moving the rook instead of the bishop retreat. Let's have a look again. This position, if bishop takes again, black can still play e5 with advantage. For example, queen c3, rook d8 ties white down uh, tactically. This kind of scenario, we can see that within this structure, black can actually improve the position quite a lot. Even if black gets double pawns, this kind of scenario is good for black as well. Okay, so very very interesting. This this bishop retreat uh, e5 now. So black's really solved a lot of problems. Hasn't been locked down. It's got a g file to play with. It's got d4 to play with. Very very nice. Queen c3, rook f8. So that kind of unpins the pawn. The queen's just pinned that pawn to the queen, protecting the queen. Rook a d1, bishop h5, connecting the rooks. Now we have rook d5. Uh, on rook takes d8, check. Rook takes d8. Uh, say knight takes e5, bishop takes, knight takes, queen takes c3. This position ends up being good for black in that end game. So rook d5 was played. e4, and this does uh, simplify the situation. A pair of rooks come off. Yeah, not taking the rook because the queen's hanging there. So, and then say knight d4, this position. So that that exposes an attack on 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 the h5 bishop. So say this scenario. Uh, well, this is actually what happened. Pardon me. <laughs> Rook takes d8. King takes d8 was needed. So knight d4 now. Okay, so hitting the bishop. So knight takes d4. Bishop takes h5. So what's happened here? This is what happens. And Black's knight on d4 seems nicely entrenched. We still have that g file to play with. The bishop hasn't got an easy, comforting uh, place to be on this chessboard here. <laughs> King c8, rook d1 is played. Uh, just to show like a disaster scenario, b3, there's knight e2 check hitting the queen, winning the queen, uh, which is not going to happen, of course, just to show some of the dangers. Rook d1, rook d8. And now there's another danger, you know, with the bishop holding the rook. If, for example, f3 that breaks that connection, there'll be knight e2 check, just winning like the queen, if not the rook on d1. So white's got to be careful. Queen e3 is played. Uh, so we have c5 holding that knight tighter. Queen a3, queen b6, king h1, rook d7, h3, a5 locking down. It seems on the queen side. This bishop is trying to find a home. And finds b5, which is not the greatest place in the world, because it means it can trigger black to simplify further into an endgame at a convenient moment, which maybe um, is, is it's really good for Leela because Leela can quite quickly assess endgames. And here we see king b8, uh, which is quite a nifty move in relation to the bishop, as we're about to see. Queen g3, queen h6, uh, queen e5. Uh, as an example here, instead of queen e5, this position, there's f4. And this is just very nice with the prospect of like a good end game here with e3. This this scenario, imagine this scenario with the bishop struggling. Black can actually make progress here. I'll show you as an ex as example. Check and the, the rook can come over to d2 and that'll be absolutely winning. The bishop could be a spectator piece in some of these end games. So that's the thing to note there. So queen e5, queen h5, hitting the rook. The rook moves. Queen h4, hitting f2. 
The rook protects f2, queen e7, offering exchange of queens, that's rejected. Because as I say, these endings here with this bishop favour black. For example, this scenario just favours uh, black. Nice endgame position for black. So queen g3, king a7. And this really prepares for an even more favourable endgame as we're about to see. Uh, a really incredible idea. Uh, so rook c8 frees the queen from just protecting rook to the glare of the queen there. Uh, rook g8 threatens queen g7. That's parried with queen h6. This might be a significant threat. For example, a3, queen g7, threatening chapmate. g3, h5. This is nasty for white. This position, because there's things like knight f3 and taking on b2. This position is ends up being quite nasty. Knight takes h4, threatens queen f3 mating. Uh, so say endgame transition here is just nasty for white. Uh, so we have this stopping queen g7. So that's kind of double attacking, you know, b2 and g2. Rook g6 kicking the queen out. King b6, this is really staggering. There's more than one way to protect the pawn. But b6 doesn't prepare for endgame scenarios. King b6 means that once knight takes b5 is triggered for simplification, the kings are fighting peace. As Steinitz would say. So this is a really fabulous Petrosian style king move preparing for the end game. Steinitz would be proud. The king is a fighting piece, and here the end game is triggered after queen f4. Bang, knight takes b5. Now queen g5 hitting g2, offering exchange of queens here, an offer which can't be refused, it seems that easily, without awkwardness. Like queen h2, why would white want to do that? So we have the queens coming off. Uh, now a4 to protect the pawn, but now beautiful idea c4, really aggressive king now. After rook c1, king c5, we're walking into a self pin. b3, king b4, really aggressive king. Look at white's king just sitting at home. Black's king is is out and about, damaging pawns, putting pawns under safety issues. Uh, here, if b takes c4, then king takes. This position is just nasty for white. The black king is really helping the rook, and we've got a past a pawn here. So we have rook takes c4, but still, this scenario is highly unpleasant for white. The king's not doing anything. h5 locking down king side a bit more. Rook e7 now is played, offering f5. This is not taken. Uh, <laughs> this looks as though the white king wants to come into the game. King g3. We have h4 check, and now king f4 is played. On king takes h4, then actually the e3 pawn after f4 is extremely dangerous. For example, here e3, and then here e king c2, and then king d2, and then e2 winning. So yeah, the king has to lock down this e3. King takes a4, and we've got this big past a pawn now b6 king b4 getting out of the way the a pawn f5 is taken but it's too little too late from white here uh, this pawn is protected check uh, king d7 sorry e7 rook a gaining behind the pawn the tarish will get the the rooks behind the pawns in general a3, rook e1, king takes b6. It's a winning endgame. Two connected past pawns coming up the board, totally winning. The game actually ended here after check. If we carry this on for a bit, king d4, check, king c3, a2. This is just queening basically, and there's no point. This pawn is going to be stopped, and the b pawn will win. So, absolutely winning endgame. So, I'll take it where the game ended after rook c1 check adjudicated as a win for black so bobcat taken down by leader with the black pieces lena is actually winning games it seems uh the temperature is with leela now she's cooled down a bit and calculating a bit better calculation speeds on the rise it seems in this final set of crucial games it will be a tragic thing if if leela did you know start to play like old leela this late stage and didn't qualify but Thankfully, it's only two to three months to wait for the next TCEC. But at the moment, Leela seems to be her usual self. Cool, calm and collected. <laughs> okay, comments, 
Questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.